Knight of the Angelic Casta, Savior of the Lion, Grand Master of the Order, Lord of the Dark Angels, Protector of Caliban, Chaos Heretic, Destroyer of Caliban, Sorcerer of the Abyss, Arch Traitor, Dark Oracle, First of the Fallen. Can one man be all of these things? We'll find out today as I review Luther, First of the Fallen by Gav Thorpe, part of the Horus Heresy character series from Warhammer 40,000. But before I talk about the book, I want to give a little backstory first. So, let's begin. So to first give context, the Dark Angels Space Marine Legion were essentially the very first Legion of Space Marines ever founded and created by the Emperor. They have this thing, this motif of very old school Renaissance knights, wooden things such as cloaks, angel winged helmets, but also having very old school robes, as well as wielding a bunch of English broadswords. They also have a very strict code of honor as well, like the old school Renaissance knights. However, they harbor a dark secret due to the fact that Luther, our character we will be talking about today, essentially rebelled against their creator, Lionel Johnson. And because of this, he led a legion of space marines known as the Fallen. And the Dark Angels have made it their personal mission to hunt down all of the Fallen. But they have to keep it very hush-hush for some reason, because they view it as such a stain on their honor. And they think that anyone who finds out about this would think lesser of the First Legion. So because of this, they try to keep it very down low. But Luther himself is a very special case, considering his actions. For you see, Luther's betrayal of the lion not only resulted in him leading a rebellion against essentially someone who was his brother-in-arms, as well as his commanding officer, but because of his fall to chaos, it resulted in the destruction of his home world of Caliban, and him essentially putting the lion into a coma. So as of right now, because of his actions, his home planet is, is completely destroyed, except for the single fortress known as Aldruk, which has been renamed The Rock, as essentially the last shard of Caliban that still exists in the Warhammer 40,000 galaxy. But with that being said, let's talk about the book itself. So at a solid 211 pages, Luther, First of the Fallen, is not as large as many other books of the Warhammer series, which ranges up to from the 300s to 400s, or even possibly a thousand. But despite the short page length, this one actually is a very fascinating story. Like, despite the fact that it's much smaller, it's the death of the story that keeps you going throughout. Like, I finished this book in at least two weeks, and I was so excited every time I kept diving into it. Luther himself is actually a very fascinating three-dimensional character, especially as this is his story. It describes his backstory of how, growing up on Caliban, it shows him as a bright-eyed youth, learning of the stories of great warriors and knights, facing off against the great beasts that inhabited Caliban, which in actuality were demons of chaos that just looked like massive, unnatural beasts. But they didn't know this. But throughout this, we see how he journeys from being a bright-eyed youth and a fresh new knight to a commander of legions of soldiers to a traitor of his own kind, as well as betraying someone who is his brother-in-arms, Lionel Johnson, the Primarch of the Dark Angels. We see his fall and how it all amounts to essentially jealousy and essentially feeling slighted by the lion. And after reading the story, I can understand where he's coming from. The jealousy because the Space Marines are viewed as genetic perfection, which Luther himself was unable to be granted due to the fact that by the time Caliban was found by the Imperium, Luther was too old to go through the process. However, he was still given augmentations to make him a much stronger superhuman. Not exactly on Space Marine level, but above regular human. But despite this, he still held jealousy over beings such as the lion and the emperor himself. But we see how he goes 
from this traitorism, how he falls. And it's through delving into forbidden knowledge of chaos, knowledge of the warp. And it's even further encouraged by Erebus, one of the main traitors of Warhammer, and essentially the captain of the word bearers, and Typhus, the leader of the Death Guard, or the commander of the Death Guard. But we see how these two are able to pull the strings a little bit in regards to Luther by giving him more of that forbidden knowledge that he craves. But then we see how his actions led to the destruction of the homeworld he fought for. Because what he wanted to do was bring Caliban back into independence. He wanted to essentially rip it away from the Imperium and make it an independent planet once again. Instead of sending off all legions of men to die in countless wars across the galaxy to serve this essentially faceless emperor, whom Luther apparently had never met. But we see how these consequences have led to his current situation, where he is locked up in a stasis cell within Alderic, the rock. And this actually harbors back to the Dark Angels having this type of technology, because despite this, despite how many years have gone by throughout the story, Luther himself has never aged, because he's kept in a constant form of stasis away from time. Which, that is hugely advanced technology which I've never really seen in Warhammer before, like ever. So this just makes the Dark Angels even more terrifying. But we really see how at the end of this, Luther himself is a very broken and repentant man, realizing just what his actions have cost him. They've cost him his honor, his brother-in-arms, his home, and the loyalty of his soldiers, his warriors. He has lost all of this, because of his own pride and jealousy. And it really goes to show the old lesson, the old quote of pride goes before the fall. And honestly, it really highlights with this character. But again, we see even more of his backstory, which a lot of times going through his tales of Caliban, it sometimes didn't even feel like a Warhammer story. It felt like I was reading a classic fantasy tale as I was reading this. But there were always those little hints, those little nuggets that reminded you this is essentially fantasy-like, but it's all in deep space. Because they have things like laser spears, very heavy armor, which is biomechanical. But it reminds you of that, those little nuggets, but it still feels like a classic fantasy tale. A lot of times. It really does. But I actually really liked Luther's story a lot. It really kept me captivated all the way through, especially some of the fights he had. Like, his story is just filled with sorrows. Like, one of the great beasts that he ends up fighting, the Horn of Ruin, is just this massive beast that it took many days and so many sacrifices to kill. And he was one of the few survivors from this fortress and this town that he was living in as kind of a squire, in a way. But then we also see his interactions with the lion here as well, and how he actually first found the lion when the lion himself was just a child. And we see how as they grew closer, they became essentially brothers in arms, which makes the lion's actions further in the story feel just frustrating as hell. Because at one point, because Luther messed up at least once, it almost caught, had the lion become assassinated. Because he messed up once, the lion essentially exiled Luther back to Caliban to serve a sentence there, where he would remain on guard, but it was really just a form of punishment. And then, later on, when he gets the chance to actually fight out in the field again, at the call of Horus, to go against a rebellion that's occurring on another planet, the lion comes in, takes the credit, and literally publicly humiliates Luther. Right in front of everybody, right as the battle's over, he comes in, takes the credit, and publicly humiliates the this guy who was once a second loyal in command, and really just fans the flames of Luther's bitterness even further. So in a way, the lion is partially to blame for some of his actions, but not all of them. Because we also see Luther in contact with a small demon, and in fact, a demon of Zinch, who, as we know, is a major trickster. And because of this, Luther, in the end, fell 
do to this. There were a lot of factors that played into Luther's fall. But now we see him as a repentant man who just wants to make things right, but he will not confess to any of the dark angels. The only person that he will confess and ask for forgiveness from is the lion himself, who even the dark angels don't even know is still alive at this point, but still in a coma deep beneath Alder, beneath the rock. But honestly, I was hooked from start to finish with this book, and I cannot wait to read more character pieces like this, because if there's one thing Warhammer does very well, it's character pieces. So, with all this being said, let's go into the score. So all in all, I have to give Luther, First of the Fallen, a solid 10 out of 10, both as a story, as a character study, and just being able to grab my attention all the way through. But it also came in a very nice hardback with a nice black cover with like glossy green lettering. That's not important though. But this is the third piece thus far that I've read of character novels themselves within Warhammer, but specifically in the Horus Heresy series as well. I have read two others similar to this, such as Blood of the Emperor, which is part of the Horus Heresy Primarchs series, and of the Horus Heresy character series, I have also read Sigismund, Eternal Crusader by John French. Both of these books are also fantastic reads, and I've also done reviews of them as well. If you're interested, I will leave links for you all to check those out. And thank you once again for listening to this crazy man's ramblings. And if you have any book recommendations from either Warhammer or any other hardcore science fiction, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you all for listening once again. This is Rambling Collector, signing off. Have an awesome day.